And then this shows, uh, oh, this just tells you what I just told you <laughs> in the beautiful animated graph fashion. <laughs> All right, and then it's similar for path <coughs> All right, since I have five more minutes, I'm going to try to wrap up now. So this framework eases the implementation of many profiling client analysis. The efficiency of the mechanism transfers for transferring application data to consuming threads avoids microarchitectural side effects. If you got to change the architecture as you go, you could do even better, right? But given what we have today, you can build this in your VM and it would work. And then it, uh, it efficiently uses these cycles that these applications aren't perfectly scalable, so they're spare cycles, so you can suck this work off the critical path, all right? So does it solve all these problems? Do, is, do you think, like, hasn't this been solved? Aren't people been working on this? Isn't this a solved problem? Well, no. People have published, like, numerous papers on, on different buf buffering mechanisms. And as I told you, for the native threading model, this isn't, we aren't done, right? This doesn't solve uh, uh, scaling across multiple threads because we have some data structures that are per thread that you would have to get rid of. All right, but work on green threads where they all have to multiplex already before you get them. All right, so then I said that. All right, so how many such mechanisms are we going to have to build in the underlying services in order to get scalable performance? So this isn't the only one you're going to have to build. All right, so there is some hope, but we need a lot of these. We need Better communication mechanisms, the coherency protocols aren't going to cut it for every kind of thing we want to do. For example, here, we don't need coherency because we know what we're doing. So how, how should we have all those coherent checks? No, we shouldn't. But will the hardware trust you? Probably not. So uh, then you can move a bunch of the analysis off the critical <coughs> path. For example, the garbage collector should be able to help enhance concurrency because you, it should be helping you divide the work up and reason about the sharing patterns of the data and organizing the data in a way that makes it, it applications more scalable. Right now, uh, the typical VM dumps all the shared objects into one big heap, and good luck at the end. All right? Not our heap. Not our, <laughs> not our 56 core VM. Which one is ours? The Renaissance RVM, the one we're open sourcing here at Uppsala today. So we talked about a year ago at the DLS here. Okay, good. So <laughs> how are you dividing up the objects? Oh, we have uh, separate heaps for core, shared address space, object table, freezy object migration. We handle, we have a read mostly heap and a read write heap to handle the case where the hardware doesn't help you out with cache coherency. So are you letting the programmer tell you which heap these things need to go into? Yeah. Or are you inferring it from the thread usage patterns? In the future, the latter. Currently, the former. Right. So I think that's an important problem, and I'm glad to see you're doing work on that area. I think that'll be very fruitful. Well, thanks. We ought to write a grant application together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's a lot of work to establish a 21st parallel uh, virtuous cycle. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>
You haven't done that already. No. So we we are trading uh, work on the consumer work, right? That you used to do on the same corp. It's not clear when you did it before, though. What like? And it bloats the application footprint in the cash, right? So here you should be able to to make this data not consume cash. So it's not a straightforward equation that only that by sucking this data off, off this processor, right? And and taking you know it consumes bandwidth as it either moves off chip or into another <coughs> cache, right? But is that the right trade-off to make? It's not clear that that would yeah, be for every Yeah, it would be cache. great to look at those effects. That's all I'm saying. And, uh, you want me to hold the uh, other question or ask it? Yeah, Cl Cliff's got his hand up, so what if we come yeah, back yeah, to absolutely. Cliff, Cliff's question? So, okay, so for a standard hotspot, the volume of data moved between the profiling of the, you know, the first tier of JIT code versus what the second tier of JIT's going to consume is so lopsided that, you know, speeding up the path doesn't help. And when I look at it, Azul's doing sort of high-res uh, tick profiling games, uh, we're moving like 8K a second between the running thread and the, and the uh, analyzer who's going right. to pull results up. So, so when does it start to pay off? What, what like, at, at the standard hotspot, it's really, it's, you know, it's no more than bytes a second when you average over a long running time right. for standard profile data. High-res tick profile, we're doing it at like 8K a second, but we'll be cranking the numbers around. What, what so we saw have? we saw the trade-off between method counting and cache and call graph building that that's where the trade-off was. Okay. That, that, that just like incrementing a counter was, was too cheap not to do it in line, right? right. But just using so, both. So what was the flow rate? What was the bytes per second move between the CPUs? So we didn't compute that. So I don't know the answer to that. Because that would be the I mean that would be the number right. you care for saying oh I should play with this new mechanism. No, I still don't. That's but, not the only number. But that's not the only number because it's not clear when you consume it, right? So you might have to move this data anyway, is what I'm saying. Who consumes it and where is it in, when it's inlined in the application, who's consuming it and when isn't clear either. So it might go off chip and then come back to the same chip because you didn't consume it till later. But that's, but if it's, if that's the case, then you know, if it's an offline analyzer, it's like, doesn't matter. Do you, no, do it's you not offline. Fire, fire it's still inline. It's just done later. So you still have the no, cost no, no. of the data movement. Okay. Okay. That's not what I was getting at. So this is the additional bandwidth cost of can I consume it uh, on core on die in the analyzer versus I had to pump it to the main memory system and bring it back. I was that's a different question. That that's one like if there's no latency issue involved, I can prefetch right. the heck out of it. And I got enough bandwidth, then clearly that's I don't right. care how much data you pump out. I'll just pump it through the memory system. Fine. So, so this sounds like a win if I know that you're going to produce enough data in and out that I don't want it to go to main memory, or I want to analyze it rapidly enough that it's sort of just, sort of just in time analysis, and neither of which seems to fit the, the standard sort of jitting model. Well, so right now the VMs are designed more, the sampling mechanism is essentially on, uh, inserted into the code, right? The, yeah, we're using two different samples. One is insert in the code, and one is externally crawling right. the stack to get call stacks. That's right. So, okay. So, so how you engineer, the reason it's engineered that way is to keep that data rate really low, right? No. The reason it's engineered that way is because it was easier. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it easier to do sampling than to take every no, it's easier to piece do counting, of data? To do counting. It's easier to do counting, yeah, sure. And so that just turns out that you get enough data with sort of standard counting that, that, the, that the amount of data you're accumulating is usually done within the thread that's doing the running the code. And that is, it's not a tremendous volume of data. The jitter comes along much later and takes a snapshot of that one time, reads a couple of k's worth of data that's all cache missed with a couple of k's one time, and then he does some giant analysis on that. So the actual amount of flow rate of data is very low on the counts. Right, so you can keep that data rate just as low, right? Yeah, that's the thing. So the data rate's low right? enough that I don't care. So I'm looking for the model where I care. I have another model where I'm saying I'm already pumping like 8K a second between CPUs. Is that enough to care? I mean, I'm doing what your trip for my 8K a second, right, right. maybe it's overkill. Right? And if I do it like 
Well, it depends on the, the, the machine, and you'd have to measure for what particular thing right. you want to be doing, what the trade-off point is, but we found it was a very low point, right, in our experiments. Right, that does surprise to me. So what was the number on your call graph profile data that you think you were pumping between CPUs? Were you pumping a megabyte a second, a k a second? I, I don't know that okay. the answer.